a new Mr. Beast ex employee, which was not exactly an employee, spoke up again. This new story that just came out is very different from what Darkpack said, and if it's true, then it gives people a new reason to dislike what's going on behind Mr. Beast's curtains. And I'm saying if it's true because this guy's story kinda slips in some places. The person that's relating all of this goes on YouTube by the name of Ty Or. Shout out to him, go watch his video, it's only half an hour long compared to Darkpack 50 minutes videos. And for those of you who doesn't have enough time or for some reason doesn't want to watch it, I must sum up his story really quick. In that video, Ty Orr says that he's a very good video editor that because he couldn't make good videos that would catch to the public, he chose to work from behind the curtains for other video creators and uh, that he made some really big projects that made him kind of famous in the editor's world or something like that. One day he gets an email from a Mr. Beast employee which says that they want him to be a part of their team blah blah blah. He did not apply for the job and they search for him basically. Some back and forth, some video calls on meet and he finally one day goes to North Carolina. He makes a top for most powerful people in Mr. Beast company based on decision making and I don't know, he says that he meets between one and three of them, I don't know, I can't really remember and I don't wanna watch that clip again. Then these people send him to a particular studio and let him and other guys that are already Mr. Beast employees brainstorm about new YouTube videos. Then. He comes up with this idea about an obstacle course that is inspired by Super Mario games because his kids really love Mario and he shows some pictures of a drawing of this specific level on a whiteboard that supposedly was made by him in a Mr. Beast studio and everyone fucking loves it and he gets back to the hotel room and he gets a message that says that there is no place for him on the team because they're rearranging the team blah blah blah. They pay his receipts and everyone is happy. Until the video called World's Deadliest Obstacle Course gets released by Mr. Beast and he realizes that one of the levels, might be the last one, I'm not sure, looks exactly like his drawing on the whiteboard. Mr. Beast should be ashamed of this. But here's where his allegations kinda slip. 1. He says that he's a video editor but they called him for his brilliant ideas. 2. He says that he's a brilliant editor but his own video has a few seconds of wacky edits. 3. The fact that he gets a random email from Mr. Beast's crew without him applying for a job. 4. The fact that he keeps calling Mr. Beast a billionaire which is absolutely not true. 5. He keeps saying that if he says something that he doesn't have proof of, then he is lying. Now, a person that is telling the truth won't be that obsessed with making you believe that he's telling the truth, but that might depend. And number six, the fact that he's fucking randomly asking the audience for money at the end of the video so that it compensates for the inconvenience created by Mr. Beast. And what's more absurd is the fact that he says that the initial budget for the video was 1.7 million dollars, so he asks for 1.7 million fucking dollars in compensations with the donations and stuff. Like what's in these guys minds? How much he thinks that the Mr. Beast employees are getting paid? Anyway, as of now, he removed the GoFundMe goal, but I don't know man, his situation got a shit turn at the end of the video. Now I have no idea if this guy is telling the truth and he's just being an idiot with the fundraiser and with the wacky details, but again something is telling me that this guy just wants to profit on the whole ongoing Mr. Beast situation. 
as of now I can't find too much about these guys on the internet apart from his Instagram, his Facebook profile where he listed his job as a video editor since December 2019 and the reddit forums that are calling him a fraud as well. He also said that he's going to make a part 2 about this whole thing and I'm looking forward to it because that might clarify the situation a little bit because as of now at least to me is not very clear if it's true or not but if it turns out to be true then holy shit.